I suppose the biggest mistake you can make is it, it, when you're writing a risk assessment is to think, oh, this will never happen. Usually you're going to a place where anything can happen. And they're, they're a place where there are far more moving parts and many other things can go wrong. I've sat down while I'm trying to write these things and thought, ah, oh, don't need to mention that, that'll, that'll never happen. It might, you know, this stuff does happen and people I know have got killed as a result. And, and you're doing yourself and your team a disservice if you're ruling out the possibility of bad stuff happening. One of my dearest friends in 2003 was a young freelancer, he was 24, and he was the first journalist to be killed um, after the Iraq war supposedly finished. And he was shot in the back of the head in Baghdad when he was looking for a taxi to uh, take him back to his hotel, having done a day of filming. And he was a very smart guy, but he hadn't thought ahead about his transport and he had put himself in a position where he was standing on a street that was dangerous. He'd put himself in a position where he was vulnerable. And he was a smart guy um, who had loads of energy, loads of enthusiasm and loads of contacts. Um, but because he didn't think ahead, this terrible tragedy happened and nobody ever saw the stuff that he had shot. Some organisations will have a lot of money. They'll have security advisors, equipment, training, vehicles. Other people will be living and working on a shoestring. But that doesn't mean you can't do something. Getting hold of some kit, it might just be linking up with someone locally when they go and work in a particular area. Uh, it might be a few changes to their vehicle. A communications plan costs nothing. It's based on trusted people being able to communicate um, and just doing a bit of background research. All these are really cheap, easy wins. And, you know, for people who have less, don't be discouraged, don't think you can't do anything. It's a culture, it's a way of thinking, it's a way of operating, um, and there's always something you can do. Don't be dazzled by the access or the story. You will not be able to bring the story home unless you have thought ahead about your own safety. You need to think ahead. And quite often, earlier on in your career, you think, oh, I'm just so desperate to get it, or I'm so desperate to get this shot, it doesn't matter if I take my seatbelt off. You don't want your last thought in life to be, I should have worn my seatbelt. Take time to do a risk assessment. It's not an annoying box ticking exercise. It makes you a better filmmaker and journalist. By carefully thinking about every possible scenario, you will get in a place where you can get fantastic access, brilliant proximity, fantastic stories, and also get to bring them home and share them with audiences. People do their best work when they're confident. If you're edgy, if you're nervous, if you're scared, if you don't know what you're gonna do if X happens or Y happens, then that impacts on you. You know, that changes your approach to the how you engage with people, how you engage with the environment, how you view the environment. And so I think there's a there's sort of a really important, often understated function there. You'll do your job better if you've done a good risk assessment and a good plan. There was one point in Syria where in the space of a few days there'd been an airstrike, there'd been a mortar attack, there'd been a cluster bomb attack, there'd been a sniper attack. And it did suddenly occur to me, maybe someone knows that we're here or we're being tracked in some way, which was terrifying. And the temptation is just to panic. But we had a very clear set of processes. We knew we would go through if this was gonna happen. We would move location, we'd change drivers, we'd shift tack. The most important thing was that we'd thought we didn't panic when it, when it happened because we had thought it through in a calm place. And all of this stuff, just kind of gives you a bit of breathing space so that you're not confused or thrown by the unexpected things that happen when you're out in the field.